Chef Alex here, Dishing Up Durham, episode number eight. So each week I find a locally sourced ingredient within Durham region. I make two recipes with it, two videos, and then I show you a whole bunch of other tips how to use that product. And this week I've been dishing up banjo cider. So, I mean, not only is banjo fantastic for sipping, but it is a really versatile ingredient that you can use in your kitchen to cook with. So earlier this week, I did a pear poached in the citizen cider, and we did it savory with blue cheese and hazelnuts and nice mixed greens. Today, I'm so excited to show you the next way I'm going to use this cider. And it's such a great way to up the flavor in your kitchen. So I'm gonna show you how to create a brine using the cider. I know a lot of the times people think when it comes to a brine, they go right away thinking like, oh, this is gonna take two days and a whole bunch of space in, in my fridge. But really, if we just use chicken pieces, like thighs, it is such a great way to add flavor and juiciness, and everybody loves this word, moistness to your dish. So let's dish it up. So what I've done, I've taken uh, two cups of banjo cider number six, the citizen cider, and one cup of cider number five, this the doppelganger cider. I've added them into a small sauce pot, and then I've added in a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of sugar, uh, some peppercorns, some crushed garlic, some thyme, and I just let that come up to a simmer. Right, so my brine has come up to a simmer and just enough heat that we melt the salt and the sugar. And then I can take that off the heat, add a cup of cold water, add a cup of crushed ice. It's really important here when you're working with a brine like this, that it's completely cooled before you submerge the chicken in it. So another great method, make your brine, throw it in the fridge so you're ready to use it the next day. And like I mentioned, we are using bone-in skin on chicken thighs. Whenever you're buying pieces, I know everybody loves, you know, boneless, skinless. Forget about it. Go with bone-in skin on. Extra flavor, and it's gonna keep that meat really nice and moist while you cook it. Speaking moistly. So you're gonna go ahead and just place your chicken thighs into the brine. that bowl it goes in the fridge and this is the great thing about working with chicken pieces the brining time on this is four hours so this is something you can do all in one day and get amazing results from so if you're using like a whole chicken or a turkey we're talking about 24 hours in the fridge overnight in the fridge this can all be made one day so four hours in the fridge don't let it go longer than six all right or else the chicken will become too salty so right in that sweet spot of four to six hours, and now we are going to be ready to cook them. So I've preheated my oven to 425. When I take my chicken thighs out of the brine, it's really important that you wash them really well under cold water to get that excess salt off of the chicken. And just be very careful when you do that that you're not contaminating uh, any of your work surface or your counter. You don't have like, chicken water flying all over the place. And then the next thing we're gonna do is just pat that chicken dry. Don't get your pan too hot just yet, all right? We really want this nice and dry. Alternatively, you can place this on a rack in the fridge and leave it for a couple of hours if you have time with a tray underneath and the skin will actually dry out. You'll get really crispy skin. Next, we add our chicken thighs into our pan. And because our pan isn't scorching hot yet, all right, as it comes up to heat, you're gonna render more fat out of that skin and you'll end up with a crispier skin and nicer color. So this will start to cook and we'll check back on it in a few minutes once that skin is starting to uh, lose all of its fat, once it's starting to get nice and golden brown, and then we'll flip them, add some apples and put it in the oven. So 
as that pan slowly warmed up, the fat rendered out of the chicken skin, it's gone nice and golden brown. <clears throat> I've turned the heat off, flipped them, and then I'm just gonna cut up some apple here. So I'm using a large honey crisp, but whatever kind of apple you have on hand will work. And I'm just gonna cut it into large wedges and throw that in with our chicken. And then I'll knock that in the oven at 425 just until the chicken thighs have cooked through. Whoa, 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 I almost forgot. Remember that beautiful reserved uh, cider reduction from our poached pears earlier this week? Lather some of that up on our chicken thighs. My chicken thighs have come out of the oven. I checked them with an instant read thermometer. They're 165 degrees Fahrenheit internally. Really nice crisp, crisp skin, nice caramelization. So to finish this off, all I'm going to do is dress a little bit of watercress with some olive oil. And I'll put this down on a platter I'll top that with our chicken thighs and they've caramelized all on the bottom. Uh, they've sort of cooked in their own fat. So absolutely delicious. And then top with those apples. And there you have it. S Banjo cider brined chicken thighs glazed with that cider reduction, watercress, some roasted apples. I mean, this is a feast. Could not be easier to make as well with a little bit of planning. Uh, I hope you guys dish this one up. I can't wait to dive into it. Be sure to start using the hashtag Dishing up Durham. I wanna see what all of you guys have been creating, what local products you're using. Uh, let's get this thing going. I also have some really exciting news for you next week, so stay tuned.